Michelle Dalton, and we're here for an episode of Catch, Clean, Cook with Team Salt Life. And today we're featuring black belly roast fish. Here in South Florida, they're really prevalent and not a lot of people know about them. We call them rosies. And we caught these rosies in 800 feet of water, deep dropping in an electric reel. Today, we're going after the meat fish out of Pompano Beach, Florida. So our goal here, it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge, is to put food in that cooler that we can take home and cook up. We are trying to catch black belly roast fish. So we typically use an electric reel and we rig them with a chicken rig, which has about five hooks on each rig. And we like to use squid for these fish. Um, you can also use bonita with like bonita chunks with the skin since it's pretty thick. You can use it over and over again. If you end up not getting bites on that same rig, you can drop it back down with the same bait on it. But today we're gonna use squid and we're gonna see what we can get. Okay, so we are bringing this line in, this chicken rig here. Five hooks on here, and it looks like two of them have black belly rosefish. Beautiful. We can keep dropping and harvesting these fish. They don't have a limit, a bag limit, or a size limit, so they're great to just fill up that fish box with. We got dinner. Small little filet, but that's all right. We won't complain. Can't wait to cook these up. I'm gonna be making some blackened black belly rosefish island tacos and i'm so excited it's not even funny so let's go these rosies don't actually get very big this is a an average size whereas these are on your smaller end but still great for taco size look at that how beautiful is that fish and the fillets are white and crispy and flaky and so delicious i'm gonna start with your head cut right behind that pectoral fin you want to make sure you get some of that forehead meat there. You're going to follow that backbone line down to the tail. Always want to make sure your knife is super sharp, especially when it comes to these rosies. They have pretty tough skin. And funny that a lot of the time when you catch them, you put them in the, on the ice and you put them in the kill box and they come alive hours later when you go to fillet them. So it's actually a good thing. It started raining and we decided to fillet them inside the house and these fish are no longer moving. So we have a nice fish here. There we go, beautiful. Perfect size for tacos. You wanna angle your knife down. Get a good grasp on that skin. Beautiful. These fish feed off of the best diet and it's kind of what we want to consume as well. Crustaceans and shrimp and a lot of sweet seafood. So they have a very sweet taste themselves. Oh, cute little guy. Take the skin off of this one. Work your way from the tail back up to the head. And they just got this little line of pin bones right here in this very corner. Just want to cut that off. Those are excellent sizes for our tacos. We actually probably only need one, maybe two fillets in each taco. Depends on how big your tacos are. Mine are pretty big. They're more like a burrito. So we're going to fillet the rest of these guys up and have us a feast. Okay, so now that we have our black belly rosefish, I'm gonna put them in a bowl and I'm gonna use purified water. It's always good to use either salt water to rinse your fish off or purified water. Due to the minerals and the other elements that are in your tap water from your sink, you don't want it to be exposed to those minerals because it will actually take away the integrity of the fish and break it down quite a bit. So the fish is rinsed off, those fillets look so good and they're ready to be seasoned. But before we cook those fish up on the pan, blackened, we're going to be making the island slaw, then followed by the pico de gallo and a chipotle crema. Okay, so to make this island slaw, we're gonna start off by using a half a head of green cabbage, some radishes, some red onion, some cilantro, sugar, pickled ginger, which is definitely different than any slaw that you've ever had in a taco, a little bit of rice wine vinegar, ground black pepper, some sea salt, and followed by some mayo to bind it all together. So here we go. Let's start off by cutting our cabbage down into thin slices. You can use a mandolin. I've lost mine, so I'm gonna use my knife. As long as you have a really sharp knife, 
I always say that a good knife and a good cutting board are the most important tools that you need to be a decent chef and kind of eye it out. I, I tend to make this recipe by eyeing things out based on how much fish I have and how many tacos I'm going to be making and removing these big chunks from the heart of the cabbage. So I kind of want to use a lot of the exterior, those leaves that are a little bit softer. And if you do have some of these bigger ones, you can break them down a little bit by just kind of slicing them like that. Chop this onion up, this red onion. You can use yellow onion as well. I wouldn't recommend sweet onion. So we just wanna thinly chop those. That looks like a perfect amount to me. Now that we got our little half moons of radishes, I'm gonna add those to the bowl. Let's give this a little stir, see how we're doing. We're gonna keep these ingredients pretty dry right now. Sometimes I like to use my hands, chop up our cilantro. And now we will follow that up with our other ingredients, our dry ingredients, our pickled ginger and our mayo. Now for the pico de gallo. I like to use Roma tomatoes to start, a little less juicy, a little less messy, a yellow onion, lime juice, cilantro, a little salt and olive oil to bind it together. And for my favorite part about these tacos is the chipotle crema. Start off with a quarter cup of mayo, followed by a quarter cup of sour cream, a tablespoon of chipotle peppers in adobo sauce. And this is kind of what makes this recipe a little bit spicy. So I like to leave this on the side of the tacos so that you can incorporate it in your tacos based on how spicy you like your tacos. I'm gonna use a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Juice from half a lime and salt to taste. And we're looking for a bright, light, orangey, kind of peach color, similar to a black belly rosefish. Oh, I can smell this chipotle's. It smells so good. Nice, creamy goodness. Okay, so now that we have our black belly rosefish fillets all cleaned, we're gonna pat these dry. Getting ready to season. My favorite seasoning, blackened seasoning, is this Paul Perdome's Black and Redfish Magic. I've used it for many years and I'm just hoping and praying that it never comes off the shelves because it is really magic. The other side and they're ready for the pan. Okay, so now that we have our black belly rosefish all coated in seasoning, get ready to blacken them on the pan. So we wanna start off at a medium high temperature. I'm gonna put a little olive oil in there. Give it a nice even coating. Nice and blackened. Beautiful fillets. The more fish, the better, right? Next, I'm gonna put the slaw. Make sure you get these little radishes for that extra little crunch. Get a little bit of our pico de gallo here. So many good flavors going on. Last but not least, a little bit of our chipotle crema. This can get a little spicy. I can ha handle the heat, but I don't like it too spicy personally. And always finish with your lime garnish. And there you have it, blackened black belly rosefish tacos. Thanks so much for watching. I'm gonna enjoy these tacos. Mm -hmm.